today we will understand all types of misalignment bearings or we can say what are the bearings out there for misalignment condition like axial misalignment or angular misalignment or maybe combination of misalignments like dynamic misalignment and what are the bearings we use as per the misalignment condition like self-aligning ball bearing, spherical roller bearing, car toroidal bearing or insert bearing. Also in axial loading condition misalignment there is a spherical roller thrust bearing. So for better understanding of these bearings, first we will try to understand types of misalignment in a bearing arrangement. And as per the misalignment condition, we will select and understand the appropriate self-alignment or alignment bearing. Yes, these are two different categories of bearings for misalignment condition. We will understand it later in this video. So first of all, in applications where we use single bearing, like here we are using a single bearing to rotate the load, then misalignment cannot be possible. So in case of single bearing applications, we do not need to use misalignment bearings. We use simple rigid bearings like deep groove ball bearing or cylindrical roller bearing or pairs of angular contact bearing or taper roller bearings which supports only rotational motion and keep constraints on all other movements like axial movement or angular movement to achieve a high degree precision in motion that we all want in our application. If you are new on this channel, you can check out the complete series on these bearings where I have explained all these bearings in too much detail. And now, but in an application where we need to support a shaft, especially a long shaft. For example, let's say we have to support a shaft of length 1 meter and we have to locate the shaft over a welded frame with bearings. So obviously we cannot use single bearing because cantilever is too much. So we have to have used two bearings at the both sides, something like this. And in these conditions misalignment creates. So let's understand what kind of misalignment can be created between these bearings and how it will be created. So as the shaft length is 1 meter long, maintaining a close tolerance between bearing face or bearing mounting would be difficult. So in result, axial misalignment can be created. Axial misalignment can be also created due to thermal expansion in a shaft length. And rigid type bearings like deep groove ball bearings cannot accommodate a significant amount of axial misalignment. These bearings can accommodate the axial misalignment up to only internal clearance of this bearing like 2 to 5 micron. And there is a detailed video on internal clearance and preloading. Later on you can check out this video. But in a long shaft misalignment can be 2 to 3 mm millimeter or even more than that because in this example the frame is welded structure. So how to overcome this axial misalignment? What is the solution? So there are mainly two solutions. Number one is we will locate the shaft, fix the shaft with fixed time bearing only at one end of the shaft and at the another end we will use a bearing types which enables the axial displacement within the bearing to accommodate the axial misalignment. So what are the bearings we use for locating the shaft, fixing the shaft and what are the bearings types which enables the axial displacement within the bearing. So to locate the shaft we mostly use rigid time bearings like deep glue ball bearing or angular contact ball bearing in face to face or back to back arrangement or pairs of taper roller bearing. Also double row angular contact bearing, cylindrical roller bearing with flange on both ring. Or we can also use self aligning bearings like self aligning ball bearings or spherical roller bearing. Or we can also use combination of bearing. Like we can use cylindrical roller bearings that has one ring without flange to accommodate only radial load. And to provide the axial location we can use deep group ball bearing or four contact ball bearing or pairs of angular contact bearings. But the outer ring of axial locating bearing must be radially free and should not be clamped. Like here otherwise this bearing can subject it to unintended radial load. I hope you got my point. 
and on the other hand the bearing types which enables the axial displacement within the bearings are cylindrical roller bearings with flange on only one ring either on outer ring or inner ring also needle roller bearings and carp toroidal bearing because when these bearings rotate they can accommodate axial displacement and induce almost no axial load on the bearing arrangement and the second solution is instead of using type of bearings which enables the axial displacement within the bearing we can use simple bearing in a floating arrangement means we can loose fit the bearing outer ring in a housing so the bearing ring can accommodate the axial misalignment by floating inside the housing and the best example is the ball screw mounting arrangement where at the motor side we use fixed type bearing arrangement angular contact bearing arrangement in back to back arrangement and we use a chuck nut to ensure the axial locking and on the other side we use float bearing arrangement a deep groove ball bearing in a housing with loose fit to accommodate the axial misalignment and we call it float type bearing for in depth knowledge on how to design a linear actuator you can check out the complete series link is in description <laughs> sorry i'm doing so much promotion of myself so which solution is better using a bearing type which enables the axial misalignment within the bearing or using a float bearing arrangement so in application where an interference fit is required for both rings use bearings which allow the axial misalignment within the bearing but these bearings are little expensive and in float type arrangement we can use simple bearing but the problem with float type arrangement is the axial movement of the bearing on its seat cause the axial load which might be an impact on bearing service life so whenever we use the bearing in float arrangement in floating arrangement we should take the additional design consideration into the account so this was the solution for axial misalignment condition and now the misalignment can be angular misalignment also how so let's say as this frame is a welded structure means there can be height difference between bearing block resting face which creates an initial fixed angular misalignment something like this so we have to use the bearing type which can accommodate this initial misalignment this initial static angular misalignment and we call this bearing type alignment bearing like insert bearing insert deep groove ball bearing or in skf we say y bearing and in the thrust bearings there are sferd thrust bearing so these bearing can accommodate initial static misalignment because of their sferd outside surface the complete bearing part can initially adjust the angle as per the misalignment can take the right position within the sferd housing but we cannot use this bearing in dynamic misalignment condition so what does mean so let's say if the shaft get bent something like this because of heavy loading and also as the shaft length is too long maintaining a precise straightness could be difficult then the shaft deflection will vary and the misalignment between bearing inner ring and outer ring will continuously change in magnitude and direction something like this and we call it dynamic misalignment and in dynamic misalignment condition we should not use alignment bearing because in this bearing there is a complete large surface contact between bearing outer surface and sphere surface housing surface so continuously changing position will generate friction high friction and heat so the alignment type bearings are the better for static misalignment one time initial misalignment not for dynamic misalignment so for the dynamic misalignment we should use self alignment bearing like self aligning ball bearing and in heavy loading we should use spherical roller bearing or carb toroidal bearing so this was the all possible types of misalignment in a bearing arrangement and the bearing for the misalignment condition and now it's time to understand the misalignment bearings more deeply one by one so the first is insert bearing 
So the insert bearing are basically a deep groove ball bearing but having a convex outer surface and in most cases an extended inner ring with a specific locking like set a screw which enables the quick and easy mounting on the shaft and we do not need interference fit and the main feature of this bearing is this bearing can accommodate initial angular misalignment within the housing within the pillow block and we can order the housing and the bearing unit separately or as a complete set but keep in mind this bearing is for only initial misalignment these bearing are not self alignment bearing so the second bearing is a self aligning ball bearing this bearing have two rows of balls with a common asphalt raceway in a outer race and in the inner ring there are two deep uninterrupted raceway group and the main feature of this bearing are the insensitive to the angular misalignment of the shaft up to certain angle so this bearing can accommodate a static misalignment as well as dynamic misalignment and this bearing is best for high speed and low noise and our second bearing is a spherical roller bearing this bearing have two rows of symmetrical roller a spherical roller not cylindrical roller and the common sphered outer ring raceway and spherical roller bearings are same like self aligning ball bearing and can accommodate a static and dynamic misalignment but this bearing can also accommodate both heavy loading in radial loading and axial loading in both direction And next and most important bearing is the carb toroidal roller bearing. Carb toroidal roller bearings have one row of long slightly barrel shaped symmetrical roller and torus shaped raceway profile. And because of that this bearing can accommodate exclusively radial loads. And the main feature of this bearing is this bearing can accommodate angular as well as axial misalignment. Yes none of these bearings so far we have discussed can accommodate both axial and angular misalignment but carb toroidal bearing can very well accommodate both type of dynamic misalignment but this bearing is a non locating bearing means we cannot use this bearing in a single bearing application or we cannot use this bearing at the both side of the shaft we have to use one locating bearing like a spherical roller bearing or self aligning ball bearing with carb toroidal bearing because this bearing can move anywhere we have to constrain if you want to know more about combination of bearing please let me know in comment i have too much to talk about so this was all about the basics of bearing and this series has been completed here and if you are new on this channel please do check out the complete series and now it's time to be advanced in bearing like bearing selection procedure bearing sizing calculation and bearing interference calculations and all these master videos are coming very soon and i hope you found this video useful and if did please do like the video so video can spread to more people and wish you happy new year and christmas and thank you so much for the watching